Welcome to our Get Campus University podcast, where we bring you insightful conversations with inspiring individuals. Today, we are excited to have Matthew Chu, a student in the prestigious MIT Leader for Global Operations program, joining us to share his experience. Matthew's goal is to be the father of nuclear engineering in Singapore, and we will be talking about his journey to achieve that vision. He was my seniors at the National University of Singapore, where we both graduated from the engineering science program. After completing his master's in chemical engineering at NUS, he worked with home team science and technology in Singapore. Before we dive in into the conversations, a quick shout out to our sponsors only at the beginning, Get You Coffee. Check out the link in the descriptions to support our podcast and get your hands on some delicious Indonesian coffee. After this, there will be no sponsors or promotions to keep the conversation experience smooth. Without waiting, let us hear from Matthew Chu on his sharing about MIT LGO. Hi, Matthew. Uh, thank you Hello. so much for your time. <laughs> no problem. Glad to be here to give any advice and answer any queries that you might have. Yes. Um, since you graduated from NUS, uh, now I see that you are a very successful person to me. And now you have uh, entered MIT, uh, especially MIT LGO, right? So uh, now you are in Master of Science, Nuclear Science and Engineering and also MBA. And this mm, yes. too is, I, I know that it's not easy. And I know that you have a very limited time. So thank you so much for having uh, the opportunity to share your insights on the admissions and your experience for people like me. So um, to start the questions, right? Maybe I can mm -hmm. yes. ask the first questions. Uh, how was your experience and background before the MIT LGO? Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, my background um, for undergrad was in engineering science program at National University of Singapore and US um, with a focus on renewable energy systems. Uh, but even then, uh, I would say that even though I took a, even though my specialization was on renewable energy systems, the focus was a lot on nuclear. I started taking a lot of applied nuclear physics class, um, thermal hydraulics, things that are related to nuclear. Um, then I moved on to doing a master's in chemical engineering but my research topic was actually simulation of nuclear materials, which is something that I've always wanted to, to work on. Like basically, how does, a, how does a material get damaged by radiation? And mm -hmm. can you quantify the amount of damage? Um, then moving on, I worked in NUS for like, if I remember correctly, one year doing research as a research engineer in the electrical department, but with, uh, and also doing a TA role, the teaching assistant role to help teach uh, introduction to circuits for your incoming undergrads, like your first years. Then uh, that was for one year. Then in, by 2019, I joined uh, Singapore government and the Home Team Science and Technology Agency to do... Home Team Science. Read, home Team Science, yes. So we develop uh, detection solutions for the Home Team, which is like Singapore's police force, customs and border protection equivalent of the US. Uh, also for our civil defense, our firefighters and our chemical, chemical biological radiation units, basically the response team for any of these kind of threats. So my focus was on developing radiation and nuclear detection systems and using AI to detect threats as well. That was my main role for like, while, while HDX. Um, during COVID, I pivoted a bit because I needed to help my team do IT systems. So I helped to develop and plan an enterprise, enterprise system that could help like uh, automatic, automate the reporting of the results for COVID-19 tests to the Singapore Central Database. So that was my main role. Then after that, I, I was rotated out to the team um, to do sustainment work for ICAs, uh, customs uh, systems, to make sure that the system can operate. But I wasn't in that role for long, maybe six months, because by the time I already knew that I was heading towards MIT, I got the results. So I was just there for six months before I, before I left the agency. That was last year, April 2022. Then I left and I started my program in June 2022. Yeah. Wow. Actually, you have a really um, long experience, right? Like I, 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 I write down some. I, 
<laughs> I wouldn't say long. I would say that I just happen to do a lot. So yeah. whether or not I feel, whether or not I'm accomplished is subjective. I mean, um, I like to believe that I leave each workplace with it being better because I left behind a good legacy. Um, you have to ask my colleagues for that. I can't answer whether I did a good job. But I like to believe that you can leave a, the key thing is that I've left a legacy behind every time I leave. And um, yeah, that's why. That's Thank why I feel. you. Thank you, uh, Matthew, for sharing. Actually, I noted some that in here you have also accomplished that uh, some AI detections and nuclear defense systems. And you also mm -hmm. have uh, accomplished for ICA custom systems, also work mm -hmm. with the S Singapore Central Database. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's it's more like uh, nuclear as, as what you are currently in, in nuclear science and engineering, right? And also some mm -hmm. in AI and programming. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not really AI. Not, not really AI. Not so I'm much more AI. Not really, I'm, not, I'm not in the AI track well, uh, in my program mm -hmm. here. I'm definitely more on the nuclear side and the management nuclear side. Science. So there are, people in my pro there are people in my program who are pursuing AI. There's quite a number. So it's an option, but not, I'm not one of them. Mm, I see. And as a seniors from the same uh, program in NUS, right, engineering science program, maybe I would like to ask uh, what kind of uh, scores or skills that enabled you to to go to MIT LGO or maybe maybe not just directly, but indirectly or or some kind of uh, soft skills that you learn at the NUS. ESP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say definitely. I mean, yeah, you, we both came with the program. We know that ESP it does very well giving us a technical rigor. We yes. cover so many fields. Um, that's and right. coming to nuclear engineering, it was critical. Um, I would say that that's mm -hmm. definitely an uh, aspect that I needed. Uh, in terms of um, soft skills that are key, one of the things that I I didn't I would say there's not NUS that taught us this taught me this, but it's my experiences as I work. Is that one of the things that um. Uh, so I would say that we have to go back a bit. Sing people like us from Singapore are very good at answering questions. We have trained very well to do that. And it's a testament to the education. You ask me a question, I'm going to give you a direct answer to it. And we are very good at that. But what sets the people who can enter schools like MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Cambridge apart? Um, I would say uh, people who can not only answer the question, but also craft a story around it that basically answers you. So a good example is a person who I was trying to help apply for the apply for the Sloan MBA program. The question he got was, can you write about your work experience? And he did that very well. He explained, oh, I worked in this company. I made the company X amount of dollars in revenue. And then I moved on to company B and I made Y amount of revenue because I learned this lesson. I mean, he, told, he did answer the question. He answered what was his experience. But if I'm the interviewer reading the paper, my question is, so what? What did that do to you? And that is something that I would say Singaporeans, we need to learn as a whole, like not just to answer questions, but to also understand how to answer the question. Like we do that very well. We answer the questions very well to the point. But if you are, who's the audience are talking to? And I would say that that is a key soft skill that we need to learn beyond just what education teaches us. Because Singaporeans by our nature are very good technically. Our technical work is unmatched. But it's all these soft skills that really makes you stand out from the pack. And I would say that that is probably one of the key skills that probably allowed me to enter the MIT. Um, also, my work experience and your letters of referrals, all these play a part. Because M schools at MIT look at the whole student, not just his grades. Because uh, my grades weren't spectacular in um, NUS. I did okay, definitely. Uh, I was able to work, so clearly grades was fine. But I wasn't your stellar 4.8 upon 5 student. Like I was mm. never there, so MIT looks at everything else, and I'm very and I would be confident to say that Harvard is the same, Stanford, your top schools are all the same. They understand that there is more to a student than just the straight A's, although straight A's help. Um, but yeah, so you need to learn. So I would say this one key skills I've talked about is the ability to craft a story when you answer the question. Another key skill that you can we need to train is also um, that is something that we. It's something that um, I realized that when I talk to some Singaporeans at MIT that we have, the people who are here, many of them have visions, like long-term visions. visions and goals, like vision. Like they basically see themselves doing something. Like I know a friend here who 
came to MIT because he wanted to do sustainability for Singapore. So yes. he's like, I see our country as a sustainability hub. And I know they're looking at, for example, hydrogen. So he goes, it's a good thing, but they don't have the current expertise because there's a lot of supply chain issues they don't understand. I want to come here and go into consulting so I can learn and then go back to Singapore and build. So there's already a story around your runway. So basically, you have a vision for yourself and where you go. And when you have, and what they teach us in Sloan is, this is what you call the North Star. It's basically your guiding principle that sets your direction. Like basically, in the old days, when, you, when you're sailing, you always look for the North Star. North Star. And so for many of us, the North Star, and many Singaporeans, we need to have this. We need to have a North Star that we can work towards, and then you can craft the story towards. Because if you have a North Star, then you can explain the question of tell us your work experience better. Because your North Star could be, yeah. I was always liking data analytics. So that's why I did company this, company A, I worked on data analytics and I realized, oh, if I did this, I made X revenue. Suddenly, now, now the story begins to make more sense as mm, opposed to literally yes. answering the question. So this is the kind of skills that we need as, as Singaporeans to go beyond what we have. Because again, the problem isn't the technical skills. The problem is on everything else that we have. We need to yes. have training in that area. Training in that area. Yeah. I think I note down, uh, you have mentioned that um, rather than just saying, I have achieved this, uh, I, I made revenue for my company, how much, then uh, something like, yeah, a lot of achievements. But you, you were mentioning, um, we need to know, so what, right? And what did yeah. they do to you? And Secondly, also know who is the audience that you are talking to. And mm. lastly, you mentioned about the soft skills of how to craft a story, make a vision, mm. especially like North Star have that. Um, I think I, I read some books called Grit by Angela Duckworth. So having mm -hmm. um, uh, a fair high level goals, basically, um, it's like North Star. So... Mm. If if you are uh, have a motivations right like for example people have motivations to go to MIT LGO how do you uh, mm -hmm. actually explain to them your north star at at the interview and what's your motivations mm -hmm. uh, to go to MIT LGO? Okay, well for me the reason I chose MIT LGO is because the degree program is um is very practical.